Thanks for watching the Instant Reaction. For full episodes of the Canon Podcast, sign up as a YouTube member on this channel or go to patreon.com forward slash the Canon Pod. Not good enough. It's not good enough. We could have broken a record in the first off. half. We could have broken we a record. A it could have been 6 0, and that would have been the biggest, uh, the most amount of goals scored in the first half for any team ever in the Premier League away from home. And we didn't do it. I want him out. I want him out by the morning. Get rid of it. <laughs> it's a disgrace. Get him out. It's a disgrace. He's embarrassing. He's embarrassing. Uh, welcome back to the instant reaction. Arsenal. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I was just sort of laughing most of the first half. <laughs> We're so good at football. Yeah, I think we are. Think Go we on, are. George. Wax lyrical. We know you want to. No, I was you just going to say... You know, Arteta, I mean, what, what do we mean by Arteta? This is overplayed. This is overplayed. At the, at the end of the day, you know, I, I just think that there are times to be very technical, and then there's times to praise kind of the emotion of what you're feeling, and just fundamentally... We play the best football in the Premier League. I don't know why that's something that we shouldn't be saying. Uh, I saw a lot of really um, weird uh, takes on the timeline before the game that we should not be arrogant. We should not be confident going into a game of this stature. And I'm sitting there thinking, if you're going to put the standards on this team about being favorites for the title against a Pep, against a um, you know, Klopp, of this kind of magnitude, why aren't you going to confidently say that this Arsenal team are going to steamroll this Sheffield team? And steamroll they did. I think that first half, it was beautiful. I feel like every week we're saying this is the best half of football that we've seen. This is the best X that we've seen. This team is just growing. And, you know, that's the only thing that matters at the end of the day, that exact graph. So it, it's been beautiful. <laughs> 90, we well, haven't got the second half field tilt yet, but 92.5% field tilt. Um, yeah, as George was saying, Babs, there was a lot of kind of, oh, you know, we need to be careful of these types of games. I think, look, it's the Premier League. You've always got to be respectful of people. But if there was a game that we could be confident going into, surely it was this one. And um, <laughs> and we delivered. My watery eyes were turning, lads. I've got tears in my eyes. Oh, mate, you need to leave. 92 percent. Right. This is football. This is football. This is unbelievable. Nah, listen, it is unbelievable. Um, that nah, after the first half, my mind just switched to the to the next game. That's how it was. Yeah. I, I'm very much in a situation now where you know when we beat West Ham six 0 I felt very nice because West Ham and the whole you know the fans talking and stuff. Beating Burnley six uh, five 0 and Sheffield United is kind of kind of what I expected. Like maybe not six, but I expected a, a massive victory, um, and it's happened. But obviously for me, I'm looking at it like, did I learn anything new? Not really. I'm I'm looking at it more now. Okay, going to Brentford, you know how we can how can we replicate again? Um, and it's not me trying to be a great for anything. It's a fantastic performance, but I'm very much locked in, locked into the starters because I realised that we won six nil, we won four one, we won five nil, we won six nil. We're still third, so. I'm very much, you know, and this is what this is what the people that talk about, uh, you know, us having low standards and them having standards FC. Well, this is me trying to hold a standard together. You know, that's what it is. It's a title race, and uh, I'm very much focused now on Brentford. Like, what's how can we beat them there? And you know, and then of course we got that massive game after that, Porto and City. Alejandro, thank you so much for your contribution. Uh, he says no celebration, please, boys. So I don't want to see any more smiling. I can see a little Babs. George has a little smirk. No, I will keep smiling. This, this is incredible. You know what it is, mate? Like, I, I actually have a question for you guys, because at what point do you stop putting the past of what's happened to this team onto them? I mean, we're sitting there seeing a team grow before our eyes. And, you know, I don't think it's just the elation of having these six nils. How many times have we said that Arsenal need to become killers? Arsenal need to become inevitable. Arsenal need to, while you have your foot on the throats of an opposition, kill them. How many times have we said that about Arsenal as a whole? And I think since the turn of the year, the one thing that I'm really excited about isn't necessarily the goals, which are great, by the way, don't get me wrong, but it's the mentality to continue killing yeah. and the mentality to keep that level of dominance at the forefront of your mind. We don't let the standards slip in terms of being three, four, five nil up. And I just think that's the most important transition that this team has made because when you start talking about difficult moments, when you start talking about more difficult tests, opposition, um, you know, occasions, this is what you point to. This is what will be in the memory banks of every single player that in the last five or six games 
we've almost consistently battered teams three, four, five, six nil. And that, I think, is the transition that needed to happen for a young squad that believed they were prospects, but necessarily didn't believe that they were superstars quite yet. That's the exciting point that I always try to make from this. Because, look, it's, it's fun to watch the football. It's fun for us to make jokes about it. But I think we're approaching the business end of the season where if you want Arsenal to do anything important this season, this is what we need to see from the team. This is what we need to see when we start to project out. Can they do it? Can they last? Mm-hmm. Run? And it's exciting. It's exciting, mate. And, you know, I don't, I don't understand this um, attempt to bottle people's excitement. I really don't get it. I, I don't understand it from our own fans. I don't understand it from rivals fans. At the end of the day, you can only do and perform what you've got in front of you. And Arsenal are clearing every single metric, not just offensively, defensively. We have something like since 2024, we haven't let over 0.2 XG shots. We're like a complete team from back to front. And that deserves praise. Objectively, what's fair is it deserves praise. You don't have to go beyond that, but you do have to call what you see. And I'm just seeing a lot of disingenuousness from fans, pundits, and even our own, some of our own fans, to be honest with mm. you, because there is a serious amount of self-doubt. And at this point, you can believe what you want at the, at the end of the day. But I think that you need to call what you see in front of you. And what we see in front of us is the best team, I would argue, for most people's watching lives, unless you're an older fan that has seen the Invincibles, etc. So I, I just think the boys deserve that. Mikel does it, the boys do, and it's just it's, it's a brilliant place to be in. Let's continue on and let's keep knocking them back. Um, I think what George is trying to say is that we should let go of the past, and I, I definitely agree. However, I reckon a lot of it comes down to not getting over the line just yet. Yes, I agree. So, so fans will be like, oh, I can get excited right now and I can put in the group chats that my team won 5 6 nil. But they'll also realise that the way football works is you only really get your flowers when, once you go over the line. And, and that's what Arsenal trying to do. Completely agree. Uh, Arsenal finished one short of the record aggregate score in the Premier League history, which is 12 0 for Man City against Watford over the two sort of games in the league. Uh, Arsenal, the first team in league history to win three away games by 5 0 or better in three consecutive away matches. William Saliba surpassed Santi Cazorla's record number of passes by an Arsenal player in a single Premier League game. He completed 169. Only 369 passes. <laughs> Only three players in the Premier League since 2003 have completed more in the whole competition who are all City players. Um, yeah, it's it's unbelievable. I will say, the, I think against West Ham, a lot of the narrative and a lot of kind of mainstream punditry was around how poor West Ham were. And I was annoyed because I felt, well, there's a reason why they were so poor. And I think we nullified them. Similarly against Newcastle, I think we nullified them. I will say this evening, Sheffield are horrific, horrific, like one of the worst teams I've ever seen in the Premier League. We were really good. I'm not saying we weren't, but I'm more looking, you know, this evening was fantastic and whatever, but I'm not, it's not this evening that I'm particularly worried about. It's more what George was referring to earlier. It's this team. It's what we've created here. It's, it's, and this is what comes from all those times of banging on about process and making sure, you know, every single detail is right and not focusing on results. And every time we don't get over the line in something, because eventually we will. Eventually we will get over our line, whether it's in the Premier League or the Champions League or somewhere. And then what can you say? You'll be saying, oh, I saw it coming the entire time. And all the, all, the only naysayers now, all they have, the last, the last thing they're clinging on to, like Jack in the Titanic, they're, they're there. They're begging for a little little spot on the on the on the raft, and they're saying, "But but he hasn't won a trophy." And then what what happens when he does? What happens when he does? Just get on board. You can. There's enough room on here. It's absolutely fine. Just get on. It's okay. He's going to. And you know we can see the the level we're at tonight. Um, very high. Let's talk. Um, maybe not negatives, but I, I, we, we saw obviously part and Jesus return. Uh, didn't look massively, massively sharp, but obviously good to get some minutes. Hundred percent. I think um, Party looked a bit off pace, which is I expected because his his first appearance was October. So yep. I don't expect him to be a, a full full tilt straight away. And also we have to realize that the team that's playing right now they've found rhythm. That same team has started the last few games together, so they kind of know which each, each other are and stuff. And Party is a bit of a player that's more rhythm based. And the more he plays, and the more okay. he catches that rhythm, you'll see the best out of him. Yep. Malachi, thank you for your contribution. If we beat Brentford and the other teams get a draw, we can hang on with ten games to go. Yeah, and this is the thing, George. Like, if we go, if we go beat Brentford and you know something happens in that Liverpool Man City game it's potentially 
in something our will happen by the way something yeah, will yeah. happen but, someone know, is going to drop points no no that's what i mean but you know whatever whatever happens there's a very there's a very good chance if we can beat brentford that we might be in charge of something here um and then if we win all our games we win the league which is <laughs> it seems mad but it's Easy. it's 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 crazy that we're in that position can can I ask like does it does it seem mad? I've been trying I've been trying to hold how far we go with the team, but how long have we seen this consistency of performance? Because by the way, I don't know if you guys know, but this win against Chef, Sheffield means that we have bettered last season's best league run of six wins on the bounce. Mm. The, so so just factually, this team in the Premier League is performing better than it was last season. You start to look at Manchester City and Liverpool and. I just think that they have much clearer faults associated with them. Liverpool, the way that they control games is still not sustainable. There is still a vulnerability to that. Manchester City, of course, with the injuries to key players, um, I think Manchester City also defensively aren't as resolute. Why do we have to go and sit there and try to temper our expectations when this team is performing to the level that we expect? And fundamentally, I look at things like Arsenal completing 273 Final third passes against Sheffield. And for context, Man City completed 347 of those against Manchester United in the entire game. Are we understanding some of the numbers Wait, sorry, and say, the dominance? Say that, again. say that again. Arsenal have completed 273 final third passes only against Sheffield. Right. While Manchester City completed 347 total passes oh, total, against right, Manchester yeah, we... United. That. Right. That I mean, there's a getting... similar level of position to be for Sheffield United. Man United. <laughs> yeah. same thing. Just, just so jump off the beginning, the beginning word, and then yeah, same, just... same thing. I, I just feel Red like every, you know, Alex, like we list these things, all these stats start coming out mid-game, after game, and it's one stat of ridiculousness after the other. So, at what point do we sit there and say that Arsenal are playing the best football in the league? They deserve what they have coming to them, and the fact that while it could be a close run in, everything could be close. Are we not performing the best that we've performed since arguably the Invincibles? Yes. Are we a team that has deserved this trust over a large sample, not just a run of form in quotations? Yes. Have Arsenal taken steps to prove that they aren't the same team as last year? Yes. So if that's yes to every single question, then ultimately as an Arsenal fan, you've got to start having faith because we're reaching the point where none of this is about being right. It's about projecting the last 5%. And I think that Arsenal as a whole, just to end, sorry, have proven that they have been about maximizing that 5% the entire season. Every metric that you want to talk about weaknesses, we've addressed. Do we do it? Do we not do it? That's up to football. That's up to life. But fundamentally, this team have answered every single question that they've entered this season with, in my humble opinion. And I don't think that they get the, the praise for that enough. Yeah, I, I I completely agree with you, and I I would only add on a a slightly different angle to that in the the Arteta angle, which maybe we can come to in a second. Around this, what he's doing at his age, at his stage of his career, this isn't normal. What we're having at the moment is like, oh, Arteta's doing really well with Arsenal, or he's, he's really done really well at Arsenal. He's, he's you know he's proving everyone wrong. I think we need to go a stage further and start to say, what other manager has come into a team? and done a project in the way that Arteta has done and turned us around from eighth to the position he's in, in that space of time, in their first managerial job, with the resources there, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Like, if we could, if we could start to see what he's done, I think it's it's insane. The only pushback I'd say is, I I think I can hear for you, George, maybe the the, the frustration that, that people don't see that. I think for me, that comes from, as Baz was sort of saying earlier, the past errors and the past not getting over the line and the past issues that we've had. I, and I, I hear people who still want to pump the brakes. I do get it. I, I don't, but I, I, I do get those people because, you know, it, it, it's very exciting. And over a six game, seven game sample, we are showing the levels that I, I know this team are capable of. And, and we, and we've said on this podcast hundreds of times, we know, we know we can get there. We know we were getting there and now we are here. It's just hard. I think for some people to accept that and really almost like, you know, 
let let themselves love do you know what I mean? like let themselves kind of kind of love the team because it's vulnerable it's hard you know and, and to sort of to hope and to think maybe we could do it that's scary it's 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 not an easy thing to do for some people i don't think after you know 20 30 40 years of of, of um of listen the, the one thing that i want to say is if uh one of my favorite quotes of all time is you shoot for the moon and even if you miss you'll land among the stars and this idea that we want to limit our potential is not something i believe in the fact that arsenal by the way have five players okay that have been directly involved in 10 plus Premier League goals this season the most by the way out of any team is just another stat to hammer home the dominance that's happening from across the squad and of course Kai Havertz I think he deserves at least a mention for the ability today and I did want to have a small section on him after but I'm sure we'll get into players but I think he shows um, something in this match that I think ultimately we've been asking from maybe one of the most maligned players in the squad and that's just some aggressiveness in possession. And it's just fun to see players that have definitely struggled this season overcome some demons in this last run. And it starts to make me think about, okay, how do we how do we garner improvement? Where do we leave the praise? And where do we stop it from? Because at this point, I just think that the whole squad is reaching new heights, not just the players that we expect um, them to do well in. Yep. Um, expected goals, 2.3. <laughs> Six goals. Not enough. Uh, 23 shots to four, uh, field tilt 90.6% to 9.4%. Uh, zone 14 touches 64 to one. <laughs> it's just insane. It's just absolutely insane. And, uh, where, where is it? There it is. Jeez. There is Jeez. our beautiful, I mean, beautiful field tilt buffs. I'm not an advocate of pornography. This is <laughs> <laughs> unbelievable unbelievable let's go through um some individuals we've got some super chats thank you guys so much there's over nearly a thousand one hundred of you in here uh so please, if you don't already subscribe to the channel uh like the video make sure you uh, come back for every instant reaction after every single game whether Babs is here or not we will be here i'll tell you that um <laughs> uh malachi says uh, I'll answer that question. Me on FIFA career mode, rookie manager to a treble in one season. So, so I'm guessing this is about Arteta because it do, it does yeah. Babs feel like a sort of career you mode. know it, it is a bit FIFA what he's doing. It is. I mean, today was very much FIFA. Today was like we were playing against a little brother. That's what it was like. It was just can't react in time. But in terms of making Arteta, 100, percent I agree. And and I think a lot of it will a lot of these narratives we see as Arsenal fans because we watch Arsenal week in week out but in terms of that rival accolade it only comes once he has trophies yep. and not even just one trophy by the way because there will be nation as I go oh this guy's got two three this guy's got four five there is no win if you're looking for that for a win you're wasting your time so you got to look at it for it internally and I, and I look at it in terms of what I'm seeing from Arteta this season and the way we're improving and the way we're clicking as well and we're near perfection we are and it, all we need is a title because the football we're playing right now in the second half of the season is kind of what I was calling for in the first half. I was saying, I hope at this point, at one point in the season, we're going to see this football. And we're going to go over the initial pain of, the, of the, some of the boring games, get over the line. And once these players understand what Mikel Arteta wants from them, we're going to see us click. And we've clicked. It was in the, obviously since that, that break in Dubai. So I don't know what was fed in Dubai, but I'm going to book a flight to Dubai tomorrow. Because, because but something's I think, there. There's but, something but there. I think, I think ultimately, we've hinted at it on this channel. We've talked about it quite a bit. But I mean, I do think that there is merit to say that Mikel has planned this. There, it, this isn't just yeah, some shock thing. I, I mean, I absolutely believe he doesn't that. look shocked. That's all I he doesn't look shocked. And I think if you track our pressing numbers, they tell a story. It mm. started to increase as of December. We said, look, I expect a big run coming. I expect a big pace thing coming. And since that point, we've taken off because we've been able to match our press with results. And I s sincerely believe that is going to be the biggest predictor for Arsenal in terms of success. We can keep our legs if we can keep our ability to maintain this press. That's what will win Arsenal trophies this season and nothing else. Um, and, you know, broadly, just to get back on track on the individuals, I, I do want to talk Kai Havertz. I don't know about you guys, but, you know, he's now scored more non-penalty goals in the Premier League than Marcus Rashford with six and Cole just Palmer uh, with five. So I, I think it's a fun stat to show people, but ultimately... Yes. I think that with Kai Havertz specifically, he's finally shown an aggressive and an authoritative in possession action, which made me excited. I think that goal today, it doesn't justify his price tag, but if you're going to do that more often, you start to justify that. Yeah. And so that for me was the biggest benefit because I haven't seen a confident finish like that from him mm -hmm. generally 
for a while, not just for Arsenal, but even for Chelsea. So I think he's working his way. And I will always praise somebody that does steps to uh, to improve themselves. And I think, um, look, he hasn't answered any questions, but he's definitely doing the right things. That league table is beginning to look extremely exciting. Huey Burns has predictions for City v Liverpool. Thank you, Hugh, for your uh, contribution. Um, look, we're we're two points off Liverpool. We're one point yeah. of City. We play in the. Early I would fixture. say one we point. Go, we can go top. One point of Liverpool. I I know it's two points on paper, but the goal difference is a point. That's the beauty: is we can get back to two points and we'd be we we'd be above him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's not, well, yeah. No, I know what you mean. Okay. My point is we've gained an extra point. It looks yeah, like yeah, a difference is an extra point. I see what you mean. I see what you mean. Um, yeah, predictions for, for the game? Um, I, I, I think City might City might do it. I, I don't know. I just got a feeling. I mean, Liverpool have been very, very consistent in terms of results, but the performances, I don't think, have been as much. And I reckon the fairy tale, just as, from the outside perspective, comes to an end at one point where the they have got so many injuries and they are conceding chances as well where I think they've had like mm. a five XG against in the last three games because zero goals. City are a team that if they sense that and they make some opportunities, which they will for sure, then they can catch them out. And I get the fact that it's Anfield and City have not got a great record there, but I, I reckon at one point Liverpool will get caught out with that defence not being as good as Arsenal's or City's. And I think this might be the game. I think, uh, I actually think that there will be a draw. Personally, I just think that both teams have vulnerabilities and I, I think you would expect um, Manchester City to go there and win. I think that's what you, they need to do fundamentally. But I just think that with Anfield and the history of that fixture, it's going to be difficult for City. And I don't think that City are perfect. I have seen things, even in the Manchester Derby, where there's a clear quality difference. But I think Manchester City gave up far too many isolated transition moments that I think a Darwin Nunez finishes, a Jota finishes, a Diaz finishes. So uh, I think that there'll be goals. I don't think that'll be boring. Um, I, th I see a lot of two twos in the chat and I tend to agree. I do feel that a two, two draw at least is what I'm not just hoping for, but predicting. Yeah. I think, um, I mean, yeah, obviously you'd love a draw. You'd love a draw, but even if city win, you know, I think mm -hmm. it then still puts it, it, puts in, it in your hands. It yeah. still puts it in our hands because we can still go to the SEL. We can still win that match. Um, yeah, lots of two twos. Yeah, guys, thank you so much for. There's a thousand uh, two hundred of you in here. Someone put the put some it's kind brilliant. of comment on here. That's basically a tenth of our subscribers on a live with us, which is crazy, <laughs> absolutely crazy. So thank you all so much. Um, so yeah, keep uh, keep liking, subscribing. Really appreciate it. Let's go through some individual performances then, because um, I know uh, George, you wanted to talk about. Well, you were talking about uh, Kai Havertz. Babs, before you go, my dear. Yes. Uh, would you like to talk? Who take your pick? Who do you want to talk about? Um, I'll talk about Martin Odegaard because I think this is the easiest player to talk about, to be quite honest. And I was very surprised to see, not surprised, but you know, liking to see that, that he was drifting to the left hand side and that we were overloading on that side and giving Saka more space to, you know, isolate his fullback and run at him. And I think the freedom he's got now of the entire team, it can, you can see that he just can complement every single player. And it is very much on, on the left hand side, helping Martin Lely on the right hand side, obviously, helping out Saka. I think it was a very. That was a football heritage performance. When you watch a player play and the little one twos and little flicks and you're off your seat, like, ooh, ooh, those sound effects because of Martin Odegaard. And, and I really feel like he's getting to the point where it's everything's automatic. He knows where to be and what players to pass through and also the commanding as well. I think it was the 64th minute was 6th up and you can still see him getting the team up yeah. to push him forwards. Yeah. I think Arsenal are getting to the stage where they want to get to the mentality amongst the stage and Martin Odegaard's a massive part of it. Yeah, completely agree. Yeah, and even against Newcastle the other day, it's just that, it's what George was referring to earlier, that desire even at you know six still up to still be pressing and still be still be harassing teams is is, is crazy Amazing. as we'll let you go no 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 more touch balls today no touch i survive i survive again comments i do apologize on, on on his on his behalf no no okay bye bye see ya <laughs> um news in from arteta about saka martinelli uh supposedly saka was feeling sick and that's why he had to come off um, and so hopefully he gets better before Saturday. Should be if, if it's a if it's a sort of sickness bug, it should be all right. Um, and apparently Marcelli was a cut on his foot. So, so what you're saying is, I hate both of them. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Yeah, I'm so it, I'm so glad you're here, George, because because that was my influence. <sighs> and yeah, just, you know just what? So glad that happened. At some point, that joke is going to get old. It's <laughs> no, not today. <laughs> no, and and you saying what do I mean by that isn't getting old. Feel to it isn't getting old. Nothing's getting old, mate. Nothing, and especially not this team. Hey, Babs esque. Um, 
so uh, who should we talk about? I mean, you could you could pick anyone really. Odegaard was fantastic. Um, sh- should we should we discuss uh, Vieira? Maybe I quite like that cameo. We could. Um, I think uh, the number one thing probably is the pace um, on that one chance that he that he yep. showed. I mean, I really I really feel that people have constantly misprofiled him. I did a big thread on him when he arrived. It's a player I've loved for a while. I don't think we've seen that burst that people have seen, but he's not a slow player. He never was mm-hmm. a slow player. So I think that it's really nice to see physically he's returned at a much higher level. Um, maybe the only criticism that I can have after this match is I didn't love the dynamics of what that meant in terms of some of the substitute appearances. I think in general, obviously, we're trying to marry, you know, getting players back who have been injured with minutes, right? But I didn't love the Trossard Vieira wing compliment. I mm-hmm. think that we've done that before. We've seen that it doesn't work, and I don't love seeing it. Um, but in it's, general, it's, it's giving Kazola and Ramsey on the wings. <laughs> well, like, a little bit. And, yes, and look, you've but, got Cedric yeah. on the pitch who's going to overlap yeah. and put him inside, and there's always justification for it. But it's just not something I like to see. I don't like to yeah. see that mentality in general. But as a whole, I thought Vieira did well, a couple nice touches. And that run was probably the one highlight because even at the end of the burst, he's able to deliver a beautiful final ball to Martinelli, who really should be doing better to get that on target. But um, look, it, it's a player that bubbles along with Emil Smith Rowe, who bubbles. And I think that they give us things in the squad that we need. So as long as we can start to get these guys um, at least confident in their minutes, they can start to show their qualities. And that's really the fundamental basis that we need from these guys right now because. From this point to the end of the season, um, it's fun. We're on a a journey to win something. But I do think that these are some of the people in the squad that will look at their Arsenal careers as potentially on the line. And so we'll have to prove themselves. So these are things that you look for. This is pure projection. But the there was a camera shot at one point of Arteta talking to Stoivenberg. And there was Reese, Eddie and Emil behind him. And I just thought, I do wonder if Mikel's looking at his bench and going... Who do I, who feels hungry and whether the three of them have maybe just slightly come off the gas pedal. I'm not saying, I'm not saying they, they'll be, you know, but we know Arteta speaks about players in training and saying, you know, they're, they're having a really good period or they've been, they've been knocking down my door. We, he said that about Eddie before he said that about Emil before it feels like the sort of game where he would reward Eddie with it, with some minutes, the sort of game where he would reward Reese with some minutes. I don't, this is all projection. I don't know. This is just a guess. But I wonder whether he might be thinking about it and maybe they're starting to think about it and saying, well, look, we probably won't be here next year, a lot of us. You know, who 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 am I counting on in a title race? And there's a pecking order now. When you get those players back, when you have Trossard on the bench, we have Jesus on the bench, when you have Party on the bench, you start going, okay, well then I have to pick, I have to make a choice. And it's, you know, we I talk about it with the youth players, you know, what you know, why is Cedric coming on before Real Walters? Well, there might be a bit of a hierarchy here. So yeah, it's it's an interesting time for I think those three specifically, Reese, Eddie, and and Emil. I don't think that there's a hierarchy yet, only because I haven't seen enough sample of him to resort to that hierarchy. I mean, yeah, yeah, no, it's, that's game. his projection. My yeah, guess, that's my guess yeah. moving forward. Yeah, I just think that, you know, this game we're definitely marrying getting injured players back. But in general, again, I will maintain the same energy. All of the bench players, we, we are a good teammate. It's like, yeah. if you don't prove that you're going to add something to the squad at a fundamental level, then you're going to, you're going to, basically put yourself up for sale and that's ultimately what's going to happen on a team that's reaching for titles and so i think each player has their story i'm not Mm -hmm. taking anything away from this game i do think cedric was poor i didn't love that cameo um but again i think the one thing that i really love to see of course is having some of our injured players back that we're going to rely upon and Mm -hmm. you look at that bench and you start to say okay ultimately do i have something that can change the game and i feel confident saying now that we do um, the one thing I'm looking at that bench with, mate, is it would be lovely to get Tommy Asu and Zinchenko back because that's probably the one thing that bench looks light in defense. Yeah. Well, Ultimately, just... it's really nice from a midfield to an attacking standpoint. There's a lot of profiles there that we know can change things, but in defense, etc. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the one thing. Well, I'm just thinking, you know, we have three players to come back. So, so there's three more names in here, Tommy Asu, Zinchenko and Timber. And I think all three of those will be in the squad. I don't think that's, sure. I don't think that's debatable. So there's three names here that need to drop out. I think Cedric is one of them. I think he, he will, he will come out. Then the next two start to go interesting. And I look at a name like Inketia and I think possible. I look at a name like Nelson and that's possible. And look at a name like Smith Rowe and that's possible. So, 
that's what I'm saying. You know, what, once we have those players back, I'm not saying, you know, things will change game to game. We get injuries, et cetera, et cetera. Who knows if Martinelli's available? But in, in the full available squad, we have to start thinking about, you know, that next layering on top and supposedly the signing. So I don't I know. Would, I just wonder whether those three are thinking, are we next? Look, I'll put, look, I have, look, I obviously love him, so I'm going to defend him. I don't think Smith Rowe is in the same thing because ultimately Vieira has a similar ask. You know, I mean, I don't think it's somebody who, another player that I love, has had the same amount of cameos as really Emil all season. Mm. And I think when I look at it, I look at redundancy. I'll just end on that. And for me, Enkedia is redundant if we're going to use Kai Havertz in the nine role. So yeah. that's why he's put on a chopping block. Reese Nelson is redundant with Trossard, Jesus, yeah. um, Martinelli as a left winger. That's redundancy. Cedric, do we need a Cedric quality? No, we don't. So like mm-hmm. when I start to look, those are my personal three that would be worried broadly in the squad. But um, yeah, that's uh, – I make no – no, Z- no Z- Zedifold says, like, says, feel like George has a soft spot for ESR. <laughs> Well picked up, yeah. <laughs> um, let's. Uh... He is the best player in the squad. Just give it up. <laughs> he loves, he's the best player in the Premier League. I think you said yeah. that. Um, <clears throat> we'll do. You got five minutes. Uh, you got absolutely. Five minutes? Absolutely. Uh, let's do some questions. So uh, stick your questions in the chat. We'll come to as many as we possibly can. Thank you guys so much for sticking around with us. Um, still a thousand two hundred of you in here, which is amazing. Please make sure you like and subscribe and check out the Canon podcast and all that good stuff. But yeah, put your. Uh, questions in the chat and we will come to them. Cedric is our best player, mate, says Barry Young. <laughs> it is slightly annoying seeing him, isn't it? Uh, King Kololek says, let's talk, we need to talk about Jorginho. Hmm. I think um, it was another really good performance. Look, he just, he gives you something in possession that the team might need in, in different areas. I think before the game I was asking to see whether or not we can see a little bit more balls over the top of that kind of mid-block. I hmm. think that that's the game at least against Porto, that I'm really highlighting as a particular pattern of play that I want to see improved. And I think he just helps with that. Um, A lot of what Jorginho gives us on the ball is something that you would hope Thomas Partey would have given us throughout the season. But broadly speaking, I mean, maybe I'll throw it back to you, mate, because I've asked this question before. We've seen brilliant games with Jorginho and Declan Rice, and we've seen brilliant games with an inverted fullback coming in. I think the big question I'm always going to ask of that pivot is we see specific games call for specific things, but ultimately what is it that a midfield pivot gives you in the middle third versus having a defender come in to draw out people and form that pivot? Because I think Jorginho, he gives you more midfield things than fullback things. And what is it if we're going to ask ourselves, what's a successful pivot? I think that question is really important, at least from a recruitment standpoint, when you're looking at somebody that Mm -hmm. has a short kind of half-life, really, whether that's Mm -hmm. Jorginho, whether that's Zinchenko, whether that's whatever we buy, we've got to find the next step to Arsenal. And and I'm wondering, what is the skill? Is it the experience? Is it the passing? What is it? Yeah, I... It's got to be. It's got to complement what we've what we've got. It will depend who leaves. But I look again. I think we spoke about this before. Right? I I still look at someone who can receive high up in a block as well as playing in a six. That's a skill I really want in our team. I still, if we're not going to be playing Smith Rowe, I want a more of a carrier from deep. That could end up being Timber. I don't know. Um, I think I'd like to see someone who's a bit more maybe adventurous with their switching. But again, that could be rice, as in that could develop in rice. It's it's hard to say. So I don't. I honestly don't know. I think probably we'll add some real physicality. I think that's what I some some size in, in there. I think that's that feels like the next step, um, something in there. But I'd love someone who who had that along with another a couple of other skills that we don't have. Maybe some carrying or something. You know, you look at Amadou Anana at Everton, and you think is that something we have at the squad? Probably not in the squad. Probably not. And then you look at someone like Gabriel. I think we spoke about. You know, could could he? develop that technical ability that maybe he, he's lacking um sort of uh, passing wise and, and 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 on the ball maybe um but yeah i don't know i don't know it's 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 hard to say ronald kunka says what are our chances with man city mate i <laughs> i feel really confident i think if you look at the way they're defending at the minute look city are city have de bruyne and harland they have that inevitability factor but we at the moment are inevitable Right now, we as a team are inevitable. I I still want to look at an individual who can who can be that for us. Maybe that is going to be Saka moving forward. I'm open to to that 100. But right now, I think we have that to match them, and we also have the structure and stability. I mean, what what was that thing you said earlier? I think we've conceded 
two chances in 2024 that are over like a 0.2 of an XG or 0.1 of an XG or something. Yeah, it's ridiculous. And like, that's gonna be that's unheard of. Well, that's but that's your that's that's your inevitability. Like when you talk about a separator, look, Arsenal this season. If we're talking purely this season about our chances against against Manchester City, you're not talking about individuals. So I I, always, I automatically throw that away. And if Arsenal are going to do something against City or Liverpool, they have to be themselves. And themselves is the best out of possession team in the world. Keep that up. I maintain the chances are quite high. Personally, I put them a lot higher than a lot of people may believe. I think this squad have really taken a step forward. And, you know, Urian Timber is a big part of that. I keep saying on this channel how much he will give us yep. in terms of build up flexibility. Variety. And that, that for me, that coming back at this time is going to be so important. Yeah. I did a whole video about that on the different knock. You can go check that out. Uh, Oz Wannabe says, thank you so much for your contribution. Part of it's a bit rusty, but never thought I'd say it, that Havertz, man of the match for me. Maybe I understand it better now. Yeah, I mean, Havertz, I think we've spoken about before. For, for me, what it is at centre forward is it, it, I think I've said this, it clarifies his role. It clarifies what he, how how we imagine he needs to play. And then the more he plays like that, the more he finishes in the way he did this evening, the more flicks outside the box and then runs in behind he plays the more he's a sort of a, a target man for the goalkeeper. We all sort of, our eyes adjust to it. And I think we can kind of understand what Havertz is a bit more. Um, do I think that's necessarily the maximizing of, of that position in the squad? I don't know. But at the moment, Kai Havertz, I wouldn't I wouldn't put Jesus back in the team at, over Havertz at centre forward right now. No, I, well, I, it, there's no there's no sample for it. And I think Jesus, if anything, he's somebody that could look at himself as he needs to prove himself a little bit more in the moment he's coming back from injury things are sluggish i think one thing i will say i didn't love some of his decision making it's mm -hmm. not about the the coming the sloppiness on the ball what i didn't love was some of the intent about trying to um over improvise things i mean part part of the issue with jesus i think is he actually ironically suffers from that clarity of thought issue in a different way to kai havertz kai doesn't attempt it jesus attempts it too much mm -hmm. and i think that they both need to find a middle ground for very different reasons, but for the same outcome. And I just think that right now the team is playing brilliant with Kai. So, of course, you're going to keep the same dynamics in that sense. Final question from Milo Haynes. George, what does the sign behind your head read? At the end of the meeting, <laughs> please make sure you wipe the area. Yeah, unfortunately, I am um, at work here in Canada. It is like 5.30 p.m. He's so, slacking uh, off work, folks. <laughs> <laughs> He's slacking off work to watch the Arsenal. Um, George, it's been a pleasure, as always. Arsenal six, Sheffield, you rubbish, nil. We're unbelievable, but you know what's coming. Uh, no, I don't want it. <laughs> well, I don't want it. <laughs> we'll see you next time on the Cannon Pod in some reaction. In, in, in. You don't like to touch Wolf, so I love it. So yeah, come, come. You don't like to touch Wolf. You don't like to touch Wolf. Touch Wolf. Touch Wolf. You don't like to touch Wolf. You don't like to touch what? 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 So I love it. 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 The the Korean guy and so I love it. 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 You don't like to touch what?